Hi everyone, welcome to the Resilient Podcast, where we bring you baby product reviews, positive parenting resources, and a line of specialty design pieces for ease and comfort in the hustle of motherhood so you can live like the beautifully resilient mom that you are. I'm your host, Mika. I'm also the designer and co-owner for Resilient Baby Products. So excited for you to join us today and let's get into our episode. Hi guys, and welcome to a new episode of the Resilient Podcast. It's been a little bit because I have been sick. I caught a cold from my son and we are finally both getting over it. Um, So today I wanted to share with you guys my newest blog post that I'm turning into a podcast for those of you who like to listen instead of read. It is the Easy Eco Nursery Hacks. So it's how to update your nursery as your baby grows. Recently, my husband and I were looking for a new dresser for our son. Um, The amount of clothing that he now possesses has far surpassed the very easily stored footy onesies that he wore and his little short sleeve onesies and a pair of socks. So it was so much easier to get all of that into, we have a three drawer changing table and it also has like a little laundry basket in it. So it's nice and compact. It fit everything. I could get his diapers in there too. Um, but now his clothes have been overflowing in the drawers. And I don't know the last time we actually put him on the changing table. So we were getting ready to just donate the whole thing. But luckily we came up with a great idea. It's both practical and it reduces waste. We w- we didn't have to throw out a whole set. We were able to kind of reuse it. So our genius idea was to take the changing pad off the changing table and convert it into storage. So I went out to a local home goods store and picked up a covered storage basket for Dante's clothing. I brought my tape measure with, and I just measured all of them to see which ones would fit. Initially, I wanted to get a couple boxes and put them in the space on the top, but I was actually able to find um, one bin that had a clear plastic zip on top and it fit everything and it fit perfectly on top of it. It matched the color story too. So it was awesome. It only cost me $15 to do this. Um, considering whole new dressers that we were looking at were between 80 and $150 that we were going to have to shell out. And I can now get all of his clothes folded in the basket on the top without any issue. And if you guys don't know about the KonMari method, it is no joke. That's how I fold all of his clothes. And that's how I fold my clothing as well. You can see everything. It's folded nicely. It fits nicely. And I have linked the KonMari method if you don't know about Marie Kondo yet. Her whole YouTube video and everything is in there. And that is going to be in the description of the podcast. I'll also give you the link to the blog post so you can see all of these things. So it always feels great when you can save money and reduce waste. Having a baby feels incredibly wasteful. You buy all these clothing, all these different toys and stuff, and you feel like only half of them are being worn or played with. So I thought this was a wonderful way to kind of repurpose the changing table. It's also good too, if you're going to have more than one child, you can kind of keep this furniture and reuse it. So you don't have to be buying new furniture every time. You have a baby if you're planning on having, you know, some new additions to your family in the future. I also want to talk about things that other things that you can repurpose. So we already talked about the changing table. You can convert it into a dresser using storage bins. Uh, pant hangers, they have the pant hangers that are like a bunch of different hangers on kind of a like a chain. So it's meant for you to be able to fit a bunch of pants in your closet at one time and it just is more compact. We use these for a hanging rack for baby accessories. So in the summer, it held held his like sun hats, um, his water shoes, stuff like that. And then in the winter, it holds his gloves, scarves, hats. It's a great way to have everything in one place. And we just put it in our coat closet. Wall mounted shelves are great for stuffed animal displays. We had two floating shelves in what is Dante's nursery now. We rent, so we didn't touch any of that. That's our landlords. They decorated, they put the floating shelves up. So we use them for stuffed animal storage. It's a great way to keep his stuff vertical so we don't have so many things laying all over the bed. We also have a crib to toddler bed conversion. You're going to want to do the research on what's best for you. I've talked about this before in picking a crib with a baby. We bought a mini crib, as I have said in a few of my podcasts and blog blog posts, and it was not ideal for us. We didn't realize how quickly Dante was going to grow. So right now our mini crib is converted into the toddler crib because we got a convertible crib. 
but we have also recently bought a full-size crib um, into a toddler bed. So we are just turning it right into a toddler bed. We're actually supposed to get it today because he's just outgrown his mini crib. He's not happy in it anymore. And he's not quite old enough for us to be moving him into any sort of modified version of our twin bed that we have. We have another spare bed um, that we are going to put like guardrails on when he's old enough, but he's still way too young for that. And we figured this would be a great way for us to keep um, the new crib for when we have another baby so that we'll have that ready and we won't have to worry about buying another crib. We also invested in a mattress that is two-sided and I'll probably follow up on blog posts about this once he's actually used it. But I did tons of research into different mattresses. The one side is for a newborn side. So it's this very firm foam type mattress. And then the other side is softer and it's for a toddler. Um, So we wanted to try this out because right now we have a spring mattress for Dante. And I think now that he weighs more, it's more uncomfortable for him. I think it was great when he was an infant because it was nice and firm but the more weight you put on the springs the more you feel the springs so we're gonna try this out and I will keep you guys updated on how that goes give you the brand name and everything if you want to take a look at it Uh, my last thing that you can convert is old dressers or tables these can become craft slash workstations and there's a bunch of great resources on Pinterest if you look up DIY baby craft spaces. They talk about um, how they've converted all these different dressers into craft tables and all kinds of workspaces. It's pretty cool. And my last piece is what can you donate? So big things to donate. Um, so you're kind of reducing waste. You're giving them a second life, which is awesome, is clothing. So if you're not planning on holding clothing for your next child or any family or friends that will be having children, donate them. Some local mom groups do a clothing swap where you can trade clothes with other moms in your neighborhood to get the sizes you need for the next season. It's a great way to get a new haul of clothing, especially if you're part of any sort of mom group or you want to meet moms. This is a cool way to do it. Walkers, swings, and bouncy chairs. Um, You just really want to be aware of what donation places will take these things and make sure that they are not on any sort of recall or anything like that. You want to make sure safety is first here. So they're great items to give to a friend too. If you have a friend who is having a baby and they're looking to cut costs, um, anything that's gently used, you can always donate. Even some local parks will take walkers and push toys to use for their babies to play there. Um, There's a few parks in our area here in Boston where people just drop off like walkers or uh, different types of toys or like the big Tonka trucks that you can push and all the babies just come to play. And it's cool because this toys are here, there, and they stay there. And they kind of have a loose rule that like, if you want to take one for your backyard, take one for your backyard. And a lot of them just have like an abundance of toys that people have dropped off. So that's also really cool as a mom, because I can take Dante there to play with, and I don't need to buy him all of these extra toys. He gets to play with them when they're there. That's something kind of exciting for him to look forward to when we go to these parks. Like I have said before, there is another post that I did a while back for Compact Living um, City Moms. So you can check out that post. I have that linked into this blog post, which will be in the show notes of the podcast. You can see some great ideas there too for Compact Living. We also have a free download. Um, We have a guide that we've set up for these eco hacks slash compact hacks, ways to really just be aware of the space you have for your babies and just making sure that you're reducing any kind of waste that you can. Those um, are all available to download. We have a free like e-booklet and that is going to be at the end of our compact living blog post, which is also linked into this blog post. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I really want to hear from you. What are some awesome nursery hacks that you have figured out or things that have been working really great for you as your baby grows in their room, in their environment? Also, if you haven't checked out, we launched Fox Rain Baby, which is our baby apparel line strictly for prints that I originally sketched. So a lot of my original ideas, they come on onesies, they come on t-shirts, leggings, we have all kinds of prints, all kinds of fun stuff. And then we also have some stickers and framed posters if you're looking for more decor type things. And you can also read about the story behind Fox Rain. I'll probably do a quick blog post on that as well. And that is all on our website on resilientbabyproducts.com slash shop. Thank you guys so much. Hope you all are gearing up for a very fun Halloween. I will also be doing a blog post on 
my favorite Halloween costumes of the year. There's some really cute baby ones out there. And I've also done a post on Halloween safety, some great tips for trick or treating and just being out with your kids for Halloween. And there's some great resources on that post as well. So thank you guys so, so, so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful rest of your week. 